welcome back to the shop. What you saw in that intro is the portion of a spinning wheel that gathers the yarn that you're spinning onto a bobbin. Um, it's called the flyer, the outer portion that's spinning really fast is called the flyer, and the bobbin, of course, is called a bobbin. So what I'm doing now is I'm repairing a flyer that came off an antique uh, spinning wheel from a local museum and historical site. It's historic London Towns and Gardens in Edgewater, Maryland. Uh, it was broken, both of these wings on the flyer were broken off. I've already repaired one of them, I have to repair the next one. And the way I'm repairing these is I'm using 5-minute epoxy with wood flour. Yes, wood flour is a thing. Wood flour thickens the epoxy, gives you a little better bonding, gives you some fibers in there for bonding. And then it'll be cleaned up very well and restained so you won't even see where the, hopefully where the, where the, where the epoxy was. Um, how this works is the bobbin goes on the, the flyer shaft and it's, it's free to spin on the flyer shaft. Then on top of that goes the drive, the drive wheel. And by the way, the drive wheel is reverse thread because it's pulling in that direction, which is reverse thread. And these are two, two different ratios. The ratio of the bobbin is fixed. You can change the ratio of the flyer here for changing the, the, the tightness of your spin. I'm not a weaver. I'm not a spinner. My wife does all that stuff. She could probably explain it better. So this, this spins around very fast. The bobbin spins slower. And the, the thread, the fibers that you're spinning come out of a orifice here, through a side orifice here, into these hooks, which then is laid onto the bobbin. So, back to the repair. I'm going to repair this. Oh, by the way, the reverse threads. This is an old, old spinning wheel. Those reverse threads you can barely see there. And the reverse threads and the nut that's in here, a square nut that's in here, are hand cut. This was hand cut with a file back when this thing was made. So, like I said, I'm using 5-minute epoxy with wood flour. And once this is cured and done, I'm going to be using some brass. I've got some Admiralty brass here that I'm going to make small U-shaped cleats to go along across the break, all the way across here. And what that's going to do is add better, more strength to the joint, of course. The epoxy should hold for a long time, but I want it... But it should add more strength. But also, that's a, that's a period correct repair to put a brass or metal uh, cleat along there with some screws. So that's, that's where that's going. So I need to mix epoxy and put it together. Now I'm using five minute epoxy so I can hold it in place because it's really hard to clamp something of that shape together. So I'm going to hold it in place until the epoxy um, takes a bond, which five, it takes about 10 minutes. And then I can set it down and let it cure. So that's the real boring part. And uh, so let's get started and um, get this thing fixed. Okay, forget, forgive any background noise you have here. I don't have a soundproof studio. Anyway, I didn't start the camera right away, but here I'm mixing the epoxy with the flour, wood flour. And then I'm going to dab it onto the broken parts. And uh, like so. And then I hold those parts together, like I said, for about 10 minutes manually because you can't clamp these together. And, uh, and then when they're, when they're cured enough to hold a bond, I put them down and let them, let them cure from there on. Okay, so that's epoxied now. And I'm waiting for it to cure to the point where I can peel off any uh, squeeze out easily. Uh, epoxy doesn't dry, it cures. It's an exothermic reaction. So it cures to a point where it's kind of not quite hardened yet, but it will hold the parts together. Then I can, I can go in and I can clean out the, uh, I can hold this gently, got to clean out any squeeze out so it'll be gone. And then, we're, like I said, we're going to stain this so it'll look like it's, uh, the, the, the repair is not even there, we hope. Anyhow, next step is to clean that out and then uh, start making the brass parts. Okay, now it is dry enough where I can peel off the, uh, the epoxy. It's not quite a total solid cure. Now, don't complain about me using a marking knife. I'm using the edge of the marking knife here because it's nice and small. It allows me to get in there and peel this stuff away. I do sharpen my marking knife regularly, by the way.
Yeah, keep the soft, fleshy bits away from the hard, pointy, sharp bits. Just keep peeling underneath there. Okay, when that's cured, I can get off the, 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 the I can chip these parts off here. A little bit down underneath, back. All wood, so marking life is happy. And there it is. Ready to go, eventually ready to go into the, back into the spinning wheel. I'm going to, I gotta get the, of course the brass parts made. Um, and I'm going to be fastening the brass parts actually with number four by half inch uh, dome head screws or round headed screws. They're, they're not, you know, like rounded, they're more dome shaped. So they look like a, more like a period screw. I'm not going to distress it all because it's going to, it has to look like a recent repair back in the 18th or 19th century. So it'll be kind of shiny brass and it'll, it'll patina with time. Next up, let's design and cut out some brass parts. A um, little change of plan. I'm going to use a different piece of brass. Uh, this is from, if you look at a, there's a previous video on my channel of me cutting a couple of sprockets out of this for some looms, that my, small looms Mara was making. And um, that, I'll make the two parts for, for the flyer. So the, the first step is to clean it off real well. And then we use uh, what they're calling now steel blue, which we used to call Dichem, or I think Dichem is still a, still a, it is, Dichem is the manufacturer. So I'm going to spread some Dichem on here, and after that, after this dries, then I'll come back behind and, and outline the, where the parts need to be cut with a, um, with a, with a, an, a, 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 um, a, an awl or a, uh, actually it's a, it's, a, it's a scribe. I've got these nice little hardened steel tip scribes in my metalworking drawer. But I want to get this a good cover. It smells like bananas, by the way. Stuff I've used for decades. And the seal came off. There we go. So, that's it. And from the ground up, that's it. It's uh, covered now with the die cam where I want to do the, uh, the etching of with the scribe. And so when it dries, I'll come back and uh, scribe out the basic shape and then cut them out. And uh, I'll cut them out on the bandsaw because this is, this is going to look like an early, uh, early, yeah, early American repair, 18th, 19th century. So it, it can't, I could cut these out in the CNC machine real easy, but that'd be way too precise. So I'm going to do it by hand, like it would have been done back when when this uh, when this uh, uh, spinning wheel was made. So, next step, let's etch some stuff. Good and dry. Um, so of course I'm going to use the flyer as a template, and I want to lay it down like this as close as I can. Now, I'm going to have to pick the ends after I where this thing ends after I draw it out. So, and finish. There, that gives me the basic layout. I have to, now I have to basically connect the dots, the lines, with the correct arc, and then cut them out, and then they're all gonna be hand fit. I mean, literally this has to be hand fit. There's not gonna be a, uh, you know, just, Cut it out, drill holes, and bolt it in place. It's going to be, involve some some sanding and some filing to get it to the right size. But let me make some matchups here, and we'll cut these parts out. I believe I've got it the way I want it. Just going to make sure I mark the waist. Always mark the waste. So let's uh, let's go cut these out.
Heads off. Um, there's the two pieces of brass that are going to become those um, straps. And the next step is a lot of handwork and a little bit of machine work to get these close to the right shape that I want. And then test fit them and drill them and screw them in place. So let's move on to the next step and do some, uh, do some uh, sanding work on a little tiny belt sander. So I'm using the 1x30 belt sander. You want to have a little bucket of water because these are going to get hot. I may go get a pair of pliers to hold it while I'm uh, doing some sanding, but I'm going to go at it gently to get the rough marks off of it and then more fine tune it to shape because it's, it's a little odd, odd shaped right now. So let's, let's do some sanding. Okay, I've got the first one pretty much uh, shaped. It has a little fine tuning, but it looks like it's going to fit on there pretty nicely. I may have to take a little bit more off just to, you know, once I get it on in place, I can do some hand filing on the edges to make it work. But that, that looks pretty good. Just like that. I'll take a little bit off here. Wait a minute. Let's do this. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see with the with die cam on there, but that's going to look more like an 18th century repair. Uh, handmade, hand filed, hand cut. Uh, the only thing that's going to be machine is I'm going to drill the holes. It will be a machine. So now, let's do the other one. And there I have it. They're both shaped, both kind of elegant looking shaped. I'll clean the die cam off them and then we'll uh, drill and countersink the holes and then put in the screws. I have to shorten the screw that goes in the center here because the screws are half inch overall and I think I don't have a half inch there for that to put in the center. But um, I'll have to do some math and see if I actually need that. But anyway, so there, there, there they are. They're ground down and ready to go for the next step to clean, drill, mount, and file. And then this goes back to the museum. Oh, I love my job. Oh, wait a minute, this is not a job. Okay, all the uh, sharp edges are filed off and they're, they're final to shape. See? Um, the die cam, by the way, the, the uh, metal die, it comes off real easy with acetone. Uh, just wipes right off. So these are ready to go on to the flyer now. And um, actually, uh, I'm still waiting on the, uh, the number four screws to get here. It'll be here tomorrow. Not that it matters. This video will have continuity because I'm not going to wait and then publish another video with the screws. Anyhow, so I'll get the screws in tomorrow and I'll finish these up and off we go to uh, old to historic London town and gardens to deliver it. Can't wait to see this finished. <clears throat> now I want to drill holes, pilot holes in the uh, brass pieces for the uh, for mounting them to the flyer. And the interesting thing about that is, is I can't put a screw in the center of the flyer because the shaft is in the way and the screws are a little bit too deep for that. So I have to put the holes in the center part of the, of the flyer that remain intact on either side of the shaft. And, and then two on either side on the wings. Uh, you'll note the glue lines there. That's where the brake was. And so I've got to put them on either side of that and then onto the wings. I've also filed it down a little bit to give it a little more, a little flatter surface. Now I had mentioned earlier about, you know, hand cut, handmade parts. Yes. I use power tools, of course, to make these. This has to look like it was, it was repaired in a barn for a farmer's wife. Um, others may question why I use epoxy and not high glue or a more traditional gluing method. Well, this is going to be an active display at the museum. Uh, it has no known maker and it has no provenance. It's just a donated an old wheel. So it's not like it's a special, you know, real, you know, priceless antique. 
So the, the epoxy is going to hold, hold it the way I want it, and it's not going to be, nobody will know it's got epoxy on it. So the next step is to take the screws. I've marked this side one. Take this and take a Sharpie and mark a screw hole, screw hole, screw hole. And one there and one there. So that's side one. Now I'm going to pre-drill those holes for the for the quarter twenty, excuse me, number four dome head brass screws. Now the thing about dome head screws, they're not measured from the shoulder of the screw down. They're measured the entire length. So when I say half inch, it's the entire length of the screw. Where most screws are measured from the flat at uh, the head of the screw for the for, through the grip and the threads. There's a little difference between dome heads and round heads and pan heads. Screws. So that's uh, that's where we're at. Uh, now I got to get a. I'm going to pre-punch these with a uh, center punch, and then we'll drill the holes. I've used these uh, spring-loaded center punches for years. I highly recommend them. They're great for metal work, but they're actually great for wood too. When you want to do a pilot hole to start a start a hole in wood. So now I'm going to just do the center punchy thing. Okay, now I can drill these with the uh, 16th inch hole that's required for the threads on the screws and then countersink the first one here, which is going to be in the center, and mount that to the, um, the flyer. And after that, I can drill the rest of the holes, line it up the way I want and drill the rest of the holes through this as a guide, and then do the countersinks on these and put the screws in. Now, the screws are number four. Can you see that thing? They're number four dome head brass screws, little tiny things. Let's see if I can get a picture of these and put them up. Um, they're half inch overall. I really have to grind these back a little bit just so they don't go so deep. Now, grinding screws back like this is no big deal. Yeah, you want pointies on the end? Well, they're going to have pilot holes, so it's not a big deal. And when these screws were made by hand, they didn't have points. They had a blunt end. But uh, no one's going to see those. It's going to be buried inside the wood. Here you go, little counterboard, countersunk, dome head screw. Now for in some of the finicky bits, I'm drilling the first hole for the screw into the flyer. Now the flyer has these hooks that can't be removed on either side. That's where the yarn goes through. So I'm putting on a little wooden block here. I'm going to drill a pilot hole for the first screw. from the shaft, but that's not going to hurt. Now, I'm going to go grind, I'm not going to show you this because it's boring, I'm going to go grind off the tips of those screws so I can put that first one in place and then use that to, use this to guide the rest of the parts in place, drill all the rest of the holes. All right, that's the first one. And I'll use um, the, uh, these pilot holes to drill the holes for the, clearance holes for the, for the, for the screws put another one in and it'll lock it in place and then do all the rest of them just to keep it nice and uh, symmetrical if I can. I got to do a little bit more work on the on the brass here, but nothing serious, just to get it a little better shaped. So let's do another one of these right here. There's number two. Now I'll proceed on with the rest of them and we'll show you the finished product. 
And there it is. Uh, that's you know some Sharpie. I get that off with some acetone. But this is what we kind of refer to, refer to as the perfection of imperfection. A handmade repair in a, far, in a barn or a shop in a, in a, somewhere out in the middle of nowhere fixing a, a flyer for his wife's spinning wheel. I got a little more trimming to do on the brass to make it a little cleaner on the edges here, whatever. Other than that, it's, it's ready to go back to the museum. We're going to take measured drawings off of this because we actually want to duplicate it. Uh, for a, a, another spinning wheel we have. It's, it's, it's better proportioned than the one that is on the wheel now. We think that the flyer and bobbins that are on that wheel were not original to it. They're just replacements and they don't work very well, but this looks like it'll work better. So uh, we're gonna take measured drawings off this. I'm gonna draw this up and we'll go from there. By the way, if anybody's wondering how they got this curve, this is not steam bent or anything like that. This is turned out of a piece of wood like you would turn a goblet or a cup. Then and including the end here where the shaft fits through. And then it is sliced off. The rest of the wood is kind of waste or used for another project. Um, and the grain goes that way, hence the break down here. But that's how it's done. These are turned as a, as a goblet, like a goblet or a cup, and then sliced off and then manufactured to look like this. So that's it. Uh, this repair is complete. Um, I have an interesting video, set of videos coming up, a uh, secret project for a friend. Um, more to come later. But anyhow, uh, so until next time, make great things out of wood, if you can afford the wood.